Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event um, or a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, people call these things all sorts of different stuff now, I don't know. Um, but whatever you want to call us, um, hopefully only nice things, um, we're live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, we do record the show, however, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. Uh, you can go to our website, and we've got all of our archives going back to the very beginning of the show, back in 2009, are all listed there. So you can always watch the shows um, at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where all that is, if you've never looked at that before. Um, both the uh, live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So do go ahead and share this information, any topics that you uh, might uh, so you think that any of your friends, colleagues, friends, neighbors, whoever might be interested in, go ahead and tell them about it and have them come and watch the shows. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, mini training sessions, interviews, demos of products. Uh, basically, our only criteria is that it's library related, something libraries are doing, something libraries are interested in, um, something that might be useful that libraries to get involved with, um, pretty broad um, in that um in our topic areas. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, and we also have guest speakers that come in. And well, I don't know what you'd be considered. I you're, would be a guest. Your guest speaker, yeah. yeah. I'm technically <laughs> not the Nebraska Library Commission staff. Right, yes. You're, yeah. So, and today we have a guest speaker then, as we've just decided. <laughs> Um, Scott Childers is the director of our Southeast Library System here in Nebraska, um, one of our regional areas that does consulting and training and assistance to libraries in the state. Um, he's just in Lincoln, um, just down the, road. down the road here a little bit, so he just popped over to our offices this morning to talk about EDGE, um, the EDGE service, which is a um, technology assessment tool. Um, there's lots of different things you can use. It's online. Um, and I'll just let you explain about it, where it came from and everything. But it's a good resource that we, we've been interested in, it, not using it exactly, but um, training yeah. with it and having it involved in things in the Library Commission. Um, we started doing some grants through the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They're part of who started up. So we had some libraries testing it out then um, when it was still a pilot demo type thing. Okay. Um, but um, Scott's going to tell us all about how you can use this to um, identify and uh, what kind of technology you're using or might need to use at your library. So I'll just pass it over to you to take it away. Okay, thank you, Chris. Everything we need to know. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, at, building off of what Krista has already said, Edge is a um, it's an assessment tool that will let you take a look at your library and, and kind of give a a more focused picture of where you are with technology. And one thing that I, I do want to stress is that it's not just how many computers do you have and what type of what speed of internet you have. It's mm -hmm. all sorts of facets about libraries and technology. So what type of, of training programs are you providing both for your clientele and your staff? Mm -hmm. uh, what type of policies do you have on replacement and budgeting? Uh, how are you interacting with the community with technology and for technology needs? Uh, so there's a whole lot of things uh, around technology, not just what many people think. It's just bandwidth, computer numbers, how many pieces of software, how many databases. There's a whole lot more. Um, it is geared for public libraries. That was the project. It was started, oh, gee, what was that? 20, I want to say 2010, 10, 2012. Yeah. We we um yeah. we had our first Gates Foundation grants that used this was in like 2011. Okay. So Those it's be 11, pilots. 12 is when they were starting, and that was when it was still being piloted. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was just you know, in 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 beta being created, still a work in progress. Yeah, all of that <laughs> kind stuff. of thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it took it took a while for it to to be developed, and they did do some tests. It's now out in the wild now, and uh, I do want to to spend a good a little bit of time here at the beginning to point out who has been involved in this uh, process. So, um, where's it? Might need to just click on to it to get oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's go Thank back you. a slide. Yeah. Uh, all of the information that I'm talking about today, you can dig around on their website, libraryedge.org, uh, and find this information. Uh, I put, I'll have screenshots 
uh, of their of information on these slides as well. But please do feel free to, to dig around libraryedge.org and uh, explore it for yourself. But uh, some of the groups, uh, this is the Edge Coalition, these, these foundations and organizations and such. And you'll see there's people there that, you know, definitely library oriented, the majority of them, ALA for one, you have the Urban Libraries Council, which I think is a major player. Mm -hmm. And that's the Gates Foundation, which we mentioned in passing earlier. But there is one organization I really want to point out. It's the ICMA. This is not a library organization. Mm -hmm. This is the International City County Management Association. I believe I got that correct. Mm -hmm. If not, someone could correct me. <laughs> um, they are geared towards the management and and running of cities and counties. Uh, for many of you, uh, I think you could compare them to the League of Municipalities here in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. I think there's Sounds other like leagues. Yeah. yeah, there's other leagues in some of the other states who are attending, uh, who may not know what ICMA is. It's an international group that does mm -hmm. that goes towards these concerns. This is important uh, because of some of the things I'm going to tell you later. Uh, it is not just a group of things developed by people stuck in library land. There are outside influences. And in that case, you That's can use important. Yeah, yeah, you can use those uh, when pointing out certain standards that you may be trying to get. Um, you could say, hey, it's not just someone in library land. You know, the International City County Management Association also believes in this. Otherwise, I doubt they would have their logo listed in the coalition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so something to keep in mind about who made it again this took several years uh, for it to come together pilot programs it's now up and running uh, some states have developed it a lot more than others mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about some reasons for that a little bit later on so that's the who let's talk about what and uh, hopefully you can see the diagram but if not i'll just give it to you briefly here the heart of edge is the benchmarks and if you're not familiar with benchmarks, it's not a set of rules. It's not, you know, you're not punished if you don't meet these. It's more like a ruler trying to put into focus some vague ideas about technology by putting some specific things and say, if you do this and this and this, you're good. Um, that's kind of an oversimplification. Uh, and hopefully as we go through some actual benchmarks, you'll see what I mean. Um, again, these aren't rules uh, in a very technical sense. They're not even standards, but people often refer to them as such. There's nobody who's like um, checking up on you. Right. There's, you, there's no organization saying, did you do this? If not, you're going to not be able to. Yeah. Right. There's no library police. <laughs> exactly. um, at, yeah. least on the, <laughs> at least on this, this site, uh, I don't know if other states or, or systems have decided to, to implement rules based off of these, but the edge benchmarks themselves mm -hmm. are not that strict and have punishments mm -hmm. or anything. These are things for you to aspire to. Okay. And, and that's the heart of what we're talking about. Some of the other things available uh, are resources and tools based around those benchmarks. So there's an assessment tool. If you're uh, a person that likes to think in numbers more than narratives. Um, mm -hmm. You can go through, be asked some questions on how your library is doing in certain areas, and it will give you numerical uh, data. You know, out of 100, it gives you 44 points or 23 points based on how you answer those questions. So you, for those of you who like uh, more quantitative types of analysis, you have that ability to get that through the assessment tool. Um, related to that is a peer comparison tool. Mm -hmm. So they get their data from people who put in, uh, answer the assessment tool. So it, it, to the best of my knowledge, they don't go out and grab like the bibliostat data or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the questions on there just aren't going to be in those data gathering mm -hmm. uh, forms. And so what happens is you fill out the assessment tool, then, hey, you can get a peer comparison report as well. And if more people answer and that changes your your standing, mm -hmm. I guess, in that peer comparison, you can get an update. Now, I do want to mention this. And for those of you attending outside of Nebraska, I'm going to rattle off some Nebraska towns. Um, <laughs> so please bear with me. You can find the peer group uh, levels in their support pages. 
if you go to libraryedge.org, go to support and look up peer groups, you can find the actual groups. But they have seven groups for the peers. And just so that way, those of you who, who have so like different levels, different sort of? different levels based on population. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Omaha, here in mm -hmm. Nebraska, our largest uh, city, is the only one in the largest peer group of the Edge peer uh, peer groups. I need a thesaurus all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, they're in the largest. Lincoln would be in the second largest, group six. Mm -hmm. Then the next ten largest cities belong in group. Uh, three. So there's a, a good chunk in there that there's no Nebraska cities in. Part of it is population. Part of it is they have a peer group that has the same population, but it's based on number of branches versus single branch. Ah, we have from outside of Lincoln and Omaha, it's all single. All single yep. branch. So for those of you in Nebraska, that, that other group, that's cities of the size of Bellevue and Grand Island down to about La Vista. And of course, this changes mm -hmm. as population goes. Mm -hmm. The next 20 largest cities in, in Nebraska, so from Scotts Bluff type of size down to Holdridge size, mm -hmm. uh, Holdridge, Wayne, Gretna, uh, those would be in group two. And that leaves everyone else in the state of Nebraska into group one. So cities the size of Ogallala and Wahoo, mm -hmm. all the way down to that community that has a library that serves 83 people. Yeah. That's a huge range. That, that's there a huge range. Bottom. And yeah. even in, in uh, group three, there could be a difference of maybe 10,000 population wise. I'm not saying this to scare people yeah. away from peer comparison. <laughs> I'm just saying you need to be aware that mm -hmm. those are the groups as they are now. Who you're being compared to. Who you're being compared to. Yeah. Um, it's very possible, and I do not have any inside knowledge from the edge folks, but as more data comes in, they might be able to split those into different, mm -hmm. more granular groups. But as of now, that's probably all that they have data for. So just to let you know that that is the peer group. I know when our strategic planning in, in the state comes up, there's a big question about, well, who are my peers? Now you know. Okay. The other tools, there are things for help you with PR. If you're doing something regarding a, a, um, a benchmark that you're trying to get or you've achieved, ways to discuss that with decision makers outside of library land. Um, some training uh, on edge benchmark type of topics. So there's a lot of stuff in there that are tools geared around those benchmarks. Now here's a catch. The benchmarks are free. They're on the website. And they're, they're the heart of Edge. The rest of it, you have to pay a subscription fee for. Mm -hmm. And so that it's an annual fee. Um, I've known some libraries, they'll go in, pay a fee for a year, get all the data that they want, and then not resubscribe the next year. No, that's cool. You know, yeah. they, they consider it a it's consulting. It's not something you have to do on a regular basis, necessarily. I mean, uh, things may change, but it's a good way to get started, maybe, yeah. with evaluating this kind of thing. Yeah, and, and that fee... That fee schedule is based off the budget that your library has. You can find that in support. The, the smallest, it's I think if it's a hundred thousand or less is your library budget. It's two hundred fifty dollars a year, and it scales up. Um, there is a statewide license. I know mm -hmm. the library commission applied to get extra funding for that. Mm -hmm. Was that a few years ago? Three, yeah. four years ago. Our they legislature didn't, didn't get it. Didn't nope. say, nope, we're not going to do that. So we didn't. There are some states that do have statewide license. And if you look at the, the map of edge libraries, Illinois is filled completely. It, it looks like one of those little... They went gangbusters. They went it. gangbusters. Yeah. And then there's others that have uh, a good chunk of their state filled in too. So, um, so questions so far, since I've talked about who and what, uh, while we're looking at questions, I'm going to spend the rest of the time really digging into benchmarks. So if you have something outside of benchmarks, now would be a great time to ask. Yeah, anybody have any questions, type it into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, or um, just say unmute me, please, and you can use your microphone to explain and ask your question if you have anything. Um, now, how as far as signing up for it, is there just an easy, pretty easy on the website to get yourself an account? I believe so. Since, I, since I'm not in a public library, I oh, yeah. I can't go through that. But from what I've heard, it was fairly easy. Uh, I've talked to a couple of, of edge libraries here in the state, and they seemed fairly 
uh, unconcerned about getting, <laughs> you know, getting into Edge. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like there's just a sign up thing, enter your basic information about your library. I'm just looking at it here. One account per library. Mm -hmm. So, and they suggest you're a director or someone authorized who can, like, be in charge of it. Um, Ten mm -hmm. business days for them to approve an account. So yeah. it's not an instantaneous thing. You'd have they have to look at your actual info. It's actual human interaction type thing. Obviously, it, it seems like it. Yeah. To get it going, yeah. Okay. So it doesn't look like anything came in right away. So I think we'll go right into the benchmarks. Okay. And see if people have questions about that and we'll get into them. Yeah, absolutely. If something does pop up, please uh, feel free to, to to ask questions. I'd much rather answer your questions mm -hmm. than rattle off into a camera that just stares. <laughs> um, so hopefully if, uh, on the screen you will see benchmarks. This is a screenshot from their benchmarks uh, website. Um, there are 11 benchmarks in the EDGE system. They have those broken down into three strategic areas. And the first area is community value. So are your, are your patrons, is your clientele um, able to, to get what they need from the library? And we'll we'll look into examples of these benchmarks in a little bit, so that way they'll hopefully clear that up. But um, it, it's services and those type of things. That's what this strategic area is about. Then we have the, this blue area, engaging the community. And this is: Are you asking the community what they need? Are you partnering with other groups in the community? Um, are you? And this is this is unique. I think I haven't seen this before. Edge. Are you sharing your knowledge with other libraries? Ah. So there is a part in there, there's a benchmark that says, are you participating in conferences or writing bits and pieces or even just talking to the library director down the road or at the other institution? And then the third one, in the green area, you'll see organizational management. And this is how many computers do you have? How fast the internet do you have? And also, how good is your staff training on technology? What are your policies on replacing computers? Um, so a lot of the internal type of decisions that do affect the public or your community will be in this area. Now, you'll notice I, I, I haven't said public library in any of these yet. So mm -hmm. those of you in other institutions than a public library, a school, a college, a university, um, a regional center, you might be able to easily find some areas here that you can adapt. Now, again, it was put together by a group of people focusing on public libraries, but there's still a lot of good information here that you could take to your own and use it as at least suggestions. Mm -hmm. and it's interesting that even though Edge is, like if you want to sign up for an account, it, you do have to be a public right, library. Right, right. But when you look through the benchmarks and on the site, they don't use the word public library either. Because you just mentioned, it just talks about the library, 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 libraries, yeah. and it's it's made broader descript that any library could potentially use these. Because a lot of this thing are things that are going to apply to any type of library, not just public. Um, mm -hmm. You just think of your community as your students and faculty, rather than your you know public community, you know, your town. Absolutely right. There, there's a lot of room for adaptation mm -hmm. uh, outside of the you know original writing of things. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's let's jump into benchmark one and uh, hopefully you can see that on your screen. If not, you can always go to libraryedge.org, go to benchmarks and you'll be able to click on these. I do want to focus a little bit more on instead of what is said, I want to focus on like Krista pointed out how it's being said mm -hmm. because I think I could sit here and read through all of these and you will be bored to tears <laughs> and we will run over. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you read them at your own pace, but the way this is built up, at the very top you'll see digital literacy, you'll see a, a, a box that tells you what strategic area it's in, and then you'll have the actual, I'm going to peek over here at the laptop because my glasses aren't that good. <laughs> Libraries provide assistance and training with the goal of increasing the level of digital literacy in the community. And then a learn more link, you click on that, you get an expanded definition. Okay, so this is the big area that the benchmark is suited for. Then underneath that, you'll see some, some parts to it, like 1.1, 1.2, um, and it gives you some more information, like 1.1, the library has curricula for and provides regularly scheduled digital literacy training. 
So it's kind of describing what the big benchmark is about. So those of you who have been involved with the strategic planning process here in Nebraska, and you may have similar ones for those. A lot of this sounds a lot like those strategic planning things. It that sounds a lot. <laughs> it sounds like community need, goal, objective. So this is following kind of a similar strategy as far as laying out. I would call it the same thing, of mm -hmm. course, but you have big idea, how we're, you know, big idea, smaller idea of what we want to do about it, and then some particulars about what's being done. I like how this one also it gives it doesn't like leave you hanging. It gives specific examples of mm -hmm. what you'll in this for this particular one, what you actually do training in computer skills, office productivity, privacy, library resources, social media. So yeah, yeah. It gives you a little nudge in the right direction of what you're supposed to be looking into at your library. Yeah. And I want to build off of what Krista just said. Um, you'll see if you take a closer look at how they're ordered in those. Uh, smaller groups like 1.1 it starts with you're holding classes and some suggested classes and the next part of that would be you're holding in-person training classes for people bringing in devices mm -hmm. a little bit more advanced mm -hmm. and then after that you are holding training in a language other than English ah. and so I'm not saying this is a strict good better best uh, there are some benchmarks built like that because it's the same thing with better numbers attached but in this case they are saying well this is a good early step for you to look at and then after you got that if you want to progress this might be an area now I will preface this or I guess I've already talked about it. I'll post face this <laughs> um, some communities having language uh, digital literacy classes in a language other than English would be a waste of money because there's no if there isn't any, any there's, population of that. There's yeah. no population of non speaking, uh, non English speaking people in that area. Then there's others where this is a dire need because the, the non English speaking population is growing very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so you may want to concentrate on that instead of people bringing in their own devices. So don't read this as a strict one, two, three. Read this as possible suggestions. So. Yeah, not everybody has to do is going to want to do all of these things. Right, it's the local local need is going to dictate what what is important in your area. Right, yeah. but this might get you actually thinking about do we you know maybe you haven't ever had anything in a different language and you're not even sure if that's something that I'm supposed to be looking into and to start investigating that. Absolutely, you're looking for ideas, um, and, and I do want to point out an, another thing with this in that curricula and in person classes are available in at least one library location in the following topics. Mm -hmm. I will tell you right now that many of these are written with the concept of a large multi-branch library with multiple staffing. Do not let that stop you if you're a smaller library from just reading at least one library to the library. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be things in here that you will not be able to do because of resources available to a smaller library. You just don't have those economies of scale going on. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. In fact, on their website, I have seen written that they don't expect any library of any size to hit every single no. thing. Mm -hmm. This is a document for suggestions and places to grow. Um, the library that supports 83 people may have completely different needs and areas to grow than, say, a library the size of Omaha or some of the other larger cities that might be used, I guess. Don't worry about that. You're not going to be compared, you know. You're not going to be judged if you do this, that, or the other thing. You're looking for suggestions and areas to, to focus your thoughts on technology. Okay. Same thing with personnel. Some of them you'll look at and they'll say 100% of the staff can do this and 10% of the staff can do this other thing. Well, many of our libraries, 10% equals 100% because there's <laughs> only one person working who's right. employed. Maybe you're not going for the advanced knowledge. Fine. But can you answer the basic questions? Yeah. So those are the type of things that we'll keep in mind as you go through these other benchmarks. Um, and also for other types of libraries, too. There are going to be things that if you're in a certain type of institution, you're not going to deal with Internet usage from your clientele. It's not allowed. Mm -hmm. Ignore those benchmarks. But there might be other things with technology that you can use or you could adapt. Maybe it's not Internet, but maybe it's certain types of uh, legal type of Mm -hmm. databases. Okay. 
let's see. And it, let's move on to number four, uh, the engaging the community strategic area. So you get a flavor of that area. Um, any questions popped up so far while we're loading that up? Nope. nope. Either I've explained this very well or I put you to sleep. Either way, I'm glad I could help. Uh, so looking at the engage, um, the engagement communities, I chose benchmark four. Uh, this is strategy and evaluations. So the big picture is that libraries are making strategic decisions based on community priorities for digital inclusion and innovation. So those of you, again, ties into the strategic planning process many Nebraska libraries are going through. Are you asking questions of what people need? Um, in this one, in 4.1, it's based on how are the library staff, specifically director in the first uh, part, how are you connecting to other groups in the community? Are you going to city council when appropriate? Um, are you reaching out to other groups? Are you talking about, in this case, technology programs? Um, other benchmarks in this area talk about partnerships, like with schools. Now, if you're a school library looking at this, are you partnering with the public or maybe the university or this community college? Um, all sorts of things about connecting with people. So again, we're not talking about, are you handing out a computer to everyone who walks in the door? <laughs> it's talking about, well, reading from the sub list that uh, there's a library representative that sits on key community board, such as community planning, maybe economic development, depending on the size of your, your community. Um, you give a presentation to a group about the technology resources available. So all sorts of things about communication and making those connections, being part of that community, it's very important. And being in a academic library, university library or something, this would be mm -hmm. reaching out to other departments in the university, um, to other Absolutely. faculty, heads of faculty at different departments, um, the uh, student involvement um, organizations, anything that's not library, not the lodge, not just staying within the library to do things. Yeah, absolutely. When I was working at UNL, this was kind of an unwritten type of thing mm -hmm. that you were that people tried to be involved with the rest of the the faculty, so mm -hmm. faculty committees um, and being part of the faculty council and embedding yourself into that department that you served if possible. Uh, okay, sometimes yeah. it was written into job evalu evaluations, like, hey, you should go talk to these people. But it wasn't you know, mm -hmm. a, a policy at that point, but it was a good practice to follow. Yeah, that's something I think in this case, <clears throat> when you apply this to a university or something, it, it actually might be easier because in many universities, there's subject specialists yes. in different areas, and they are required, as part of their mm -hmm. job description, to be the liaison to that particular subject um, faculty people. Yeah. So that's already something they, they are doing very, very well. Okay. So yeah, all the ones in, in blue or kind of this teal, depending on your screen. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm looking at two different screens now, yeah, and I'm seeing two different yes. shades of blue. <laughs> so the blue-ish group that strategic area it's all about how are you connecting with people not with tech okay the last one i'm going to go down to organizational management and this is going to be more than nuts and bolts so if you've got a tech person they're probably going to be more interested in these areas the ones in green the organizational management than any of the others but again some of this is policy and working with your funding agencies and decision makers I'm going to go to benchmark nine, devices and bandwidth, because this is probably the most practical one. Mm -hmm. And through my years of helping librarian, libraries, whether it's because of my tech background from the university or my current position and all stops in between, I get two big questions. How many computers do I need in my library mm -hmm. and how fast of internet do I need? Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> at E-rate, is there, there's a minimum that people should be looking for now, um, right? Yeah, there's not a like there's not a you won't get anything if you have right. less, but they're trying to encourage both the libraries and the providers to provide right. um, a certain minimum level. And you can get more um, easier. You can go through the process easier if you're already getting um, 100 megabits per second, which right. is really really good. Right. <laughs> and in Nebraska, not very common yet. I know it is in bigger cities or in mm -hmm. other areas, um, but the 100 megabits per second is what they are. Um, it kind of get you through a, a simpler, streamlined 
through the process yeah. is what it helps with. Yeah. yeah. So there are going to be some cases where an E-rate application may over overturn some of the suggestions that these make. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, looking at these numbers, they make no sense without any background. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on this one. Um, I also want to point out, and we will link to a document that has a direct link to expanded definitions of what you see here. So you'll be able to see 9.1, well, what does device hours available per capita basis mean? So they have a really good uh, page that has all of these uh, benchmarks, all of these 9.1, 9.2, expands on them. So that link will be available with the show notes. I think mm -hmm. that's what you call them here. Yeah. When the recording goes up, I put any documents. This PowerPoint presentation will be available. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so that will define what some of this uh, this means. So you have a better idea what's going on. Uh, but I want to spend a little bit of time with 9.1 because not only can you get a good answer for this question, you could use this benchmark to help leverage a request for something else. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a, a practical application of a benchmark. So let's start with the actual benchmark. 9.1, the library has a sufficient number of device hours available on a per capita basis, and then some various numbers. What this is trying to measure is, if you took your service population number and say everyone comes in for an even amount of computer hours, they can use a computer for a certain amount of time and everyone gets the same amount of time, what is that number per user? That is what this is trying to figure out. And so what this is trying to measure is, do you have enough computers to fit the needs? And this is a, 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 this is a calculation to help you answer that question. How many computers do I need? Exactly. So their, their minimum suggested is three uh, hours per capita. Okay. How do we get that number? I'll show you on this next slide. I went through, found this in the support areas. And it, I'm sorry, there's math involved this early in the morning. Uh, again, this uh, this information is also in that extra handout that you can get from the show notes. And as you can see, it's on the slide as well. So hours per capita is what we're trying to find out. We're going to use D to say the number of devices the library has to access Internet. This is the ones you own as a library, not the cell phones people bring in, not their laptops. This is what you have. This also does not count staff computers. We're talking about publicly accessible. Mm -hmm. And we're also talking about general usage computers. So if you have an OPAC only station, an email express station, mm -hmm. an AWE or otherwise locked down children's computer, mm -hmm. those don't count. Okay, this is general computing, internet, filtered or unfiltered, mm -hmm. Word, all that stuff. If you have a hybrid computer, like, well, that's a genealogy computer, but if no one's here for genealogy, we let anyone else use it. Use it for anything. Yeah. Count it. <laughs> Count it. Okay. Population, your service area. Use the same thing you use for whatever reports you do. Just use that same number. Uh, some people say, well, we'll serve anyone who comes in the door. That's fine, but that's really going to throw off mm -hmm. your, uh, your numbers if you say the whole state or the whole nation. So just put the number that you put in your other reports. Then hours, hours per week. Um, and so we'll go through the math. So you take the number of devices times the hours you're open times 52. 52 is the number of weeks. And that gives us a number that's easier to, to use in reports and stuff, the three, the four, the five, mm -hmm. as opposed to 0 .00. <laughs> you know, it, it's a lot more. Trying to simplify yeah. it. Yeah. And when you're talking with people outside of library land, having a number that, that people can recognize as a number is useful. So you take that divided by your population, that's your hours uh, per capita. Okay. We'll run through an example here real quick. Uh, so let's say you're open 40 hours a week, you have 10 computers and you serve a population of 5,000. So just plugging them in, you have 10 computers times 40 hours times 52. Take that divided by 5,000. This hypothetical library has 4.16 device hours per capita. They are well in that first rung, which is three to five. So they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. All right. There's room for improvement, of course, but hey. But it's, yeah. It's not bad. Looks good. Now, this is device hours per capita. Is that like then like per week? This is how much? Or is it just like an overall? It's kind of an overall. overall thing. Yeah. 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 
And again, it, you can go through and if you wanted to, to adjust that number to say, you know, prove another point, you could always throw in some other quantifier like we're going to take hours per capita times some other thing. And, you know, we have 1.3 device hours per capita of ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. So right. maybe you, you only take, yeah. yeah, maybe you only take a certain amount of your computers and say, we've got three with Kurzweil or Dragon Dictate or something and do a subset. You could do that. Now you have math to do it. All right. So we figured out how to come up with that number. Let's say we have that number as a goal and we want to know how many computers we want. All right. Next slide. How many computers do I need? So I've done the algebra for, for you to move stuff around. Again, this will be in that additional handout. It's also on this slide. So what we're doing is we have a target HPC. And then we divide that by the population, take that times the hours times 52, and that gives us the number of devices, All right? And this is a suggestion, but sometimes it can be useful if you go to, say, your funding agency, or if you're writing a grant, and you can say, according to the EDGE benchmarks, we should probably be looking at three HPC, and to hit that, we need X number of computers mm -hmm. because of our hours and population. So let's work through an example. And if you have questions, go ahead and start asking them. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say we want a three device hour per capita, which is the, the bottom part of that, that benchmark. We're, let's say we're open 20 hours a week and serve a population of 500. So we're a small library. And this is where we get those questions from often. So three divided by 500 times 20 times 52 to give us a nice number equals six and a quarter. So in this case, they're looking at six computers probably seven to be, to really hit three. Now, I understand some of the small libraries, they can't fit six computers. Yeah, there's right? a whole physical. <laughs> well, count laptops that you check out to people that are stashed away behind the desk. Mm -hmm. Maybe that you have two sense. desktops and four laptops. Or maybe it's one of those things where if you're looking for justification to get rid of a certain type of space that everyone insists you have, mm -hmm but you, there's no need to, yeah, maybe you say, hey, we're looking at these, these benchmarks that are put together by ALA and ICMA and, and all these other groups. They suggest we, we need six or seven and we need space for it. Mm -hmm. That's a place that we can look to get rid of. So. This is good, but I like these benchmarks. They're not just to look at yourself. You can then use them outside the library to get what you need done to convince stakeholders that, we need to buy more computers, so we need to figure out a way to get money to do that. So, and mm -hmm. this is and this is why, not just the librarian thinks they need this many computers. No, we've actually done some math, and we've got mm -hmm. other organizations telling us this is the a way to evaluate and see what your library needs. Absolutely. And now, in this case, let's say you're a school or an academic institution. You have an outside computer lab. So maybe you're not looking at this particularly. However, it might be something that you can use to say, okay, the computer lab has X number for our students, but they're, they're closed for classes and we still need general usage uh, computers during study halls or something. Or in academics, maybe you're partnering with the lab to do a joint, you know, this is a, the computer services lab, but it's housed in the library and you'll be joint staffing. Well, you want your, your end to hold up. So we might be able to pull some of these numbers and other benchmarks to say, hey, this is where we should be shooting for. And Krista's earlier remark about using these for your requests, that's why I'm pointing out the ICMA at the very mm -hmm. beginning. Again, this isn't just mm -hmm. library land in their own, you know, echo chamber. You know, they're outside informants on this, this uh, project. So. Which can be very impressive to other non-library land people in your um, town or county or yeah. your administration who you need to be talking to and convincing of things you need. <laughs> yes, and, and I'll be honest, I've talked to city councils who are unimpressed with everything, and it won't <laughs> yeah, matter. sometimes you just can't, yeah. <laughs> but there might be other people who can help you. And again, like we said, other institutions adapt, use these mm -hmm. suggestions. Smaller libraries, like, like we said, you may not have room for six or seven, but at least mm -hmm. you would have maybe Maybe you're trying to get a third one in and you say, hey, even at three, we're still going to be low, but it's still mm -hmm. closer to what we should be having. 
right? And, and maybe if someone used to have said to someone, we need six or seven computers to meet this, and everyone goes, are you insane? Look at the size of your building. But we could do that with laptops or tablets instead. And then some people might right. go, oh, that counts. Yes, it does count. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then you can convince, because I know some libraries have moved into the checking out of laptops, and some mm -hmm. are still not sure about it, Or, not. but this is a way to convince, here's something, we need this many for the people. Whether the size of our building is irrelevant, they need we need this many pieces mm -hmm. of equipment. How can we pull that off? This is how. Use it a laptop or a tablet or something instead, and that's what yeah. you offer uh, um, to them. Yeah. And I'm going to throw this out here as a stretch. Let's say you want to change your hours to get people better access to the computers. Mm -hmm. you, and you're not yes, going to increase do, your... How often you're open is, is part of this, yeah. Right. So how you, long? you do some more algebra to solve for hours instead of devices. I didn't do that for you. You'll have to do that <laughs> yourself. But then you could say, hey, according to this, if we kept the same number of computers and our population stays the same and we want to hit this benchmark, we need to be open another two hours a week mm -hmm. or something like that. So any of these variables, treat it like a math story mm -hmm. problem. And if you don't want to do it, find someone in your community who likes math and do it for <laughs> you. That's okay. There'll be somebody. Uh, and use these. And, and I'm, I picked on this one because it has numbers and it shows the flexibility mm -hmm. to get that even numerical information mm -hmm. that some people, some decision makers need. Yeah. Others, it's going to be pretty narrative. But you can point out, hey, you know, the Edge Coalition suggests that we have, uh, there, there's one that explicitly suggests that library staff have paid time to do technology training. It's right to there. To learn their own, to learn stuff. To learn mm -hmm. stuff. To help. To development, help yes, yeah. is very important. Yeah. So it's there. Um, and so I, I encourage you to, to explore all of that. Mm -hmm. There's another one, another benchmark, 9.2, that suggests how fast of a, a connection you should get. I'm not going to spend the time on that today, but that formula is in the extra handout. Mm -hmm. um, I will mention yeah. those three benchmarks that you see on the screen. Let me go back up. 9.2. Uh, the first one, and this is one of those where the numbers increase, so it is good, better, best. Uh, the 512, this is email, government forms, um, not a lot of streaming, not a lot of gaming. That's the level of computer use that you're seeing with that speed. And I would focus on that download speed. You're not mm -hmm. going to get a very fast upload speed unless you have a really good ISP and they're, they're going to do what's called synchronous, where upload and download is the same. So mm -hmm. ignore the upload for now unless you're doing, you know, unless you're doing a lot of gaming and you're producing your own website in-house mm -hmm. that involves a lot of video. In this case, it's the download that really matters. So anyway, that top one, that's your, you know, people come in, look at some web pages, do some forms, meh, right? The middle one, that's going to be low-level YouTube, low-level Netflix, uh, some gaming, but not every computer is on, on uh, Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that bottom one, then you're talking the high quality uh, Netflix streaming for everyone if they all hit it at once. Um, and of course, more is better, um, but these give you at least three things to three target areas. So let's say you've already got the first one and you want to know, well, what do we need to do? What should we talk to our ISP about increasing our speed to? Uh, then you can do some math and figure out, oh, well, we need to get this amount into the building. The numbers in the benchmark are per user, and that includes your Wi-Fi users. That includes people who bring in their own devices mm -hmm. for that. Right. One. You have to think about the Wi-Fi, not just the ones actually physically on your hardwired mm -hmm. um, workstations. Yeah. There are some libraries I support that their main internet use is from devices being brought in. Mm -hmm. and, that's A lot of that's happening, yeah. And there's, yeah, there's one library where a particular user would come in and everything would crawl to a halt, including <laughs> the staff computers. Uh, it was that bad. So they took appropriate measures. So um, let's see here. So hours per capita. Let me wrap up quickly and then we'll spend some time with questions because it looks like we are going to we're closing in on, on our end of time. So edge assessment benchmarks were created by many groups, including the ICMA. So again, it's not just some library echo bubble that many things have been accused of being. There's some outside influence on this, which is great. Uh, it's more than just how many computers do you have? Hopefully, through our, our time together, you've seen that it's about policy. It's about uh, 
budgeting, it's about staff, it's about all sorts of things. Um, it can be used as leverage in requests to showing a clear suggestion by a coalition of interests. Mm -hmm. What that means is you've got some backup when you make that request if it matches one of these benchmarks. Mm -hmm. And that's that's to your board, that's to your decision makers, that's in grant applications, oh, yeah. that's in all sorts of things. If you can say, by doing this, we will hit edge benchmark 9.2 at a reasonable amount, that's a whole lot better than saying, this would be good. <laughs> yeah. It gives you a benchmark. It gives you a measuring stick. It gives you a little background, a little something stronger to, yeah, yeah more powerful to say. Yeah. Um, and I like that. It, the rest, um, I think it can be a little overwhelming potentially. If there's 11 different benchmarks, and they each have all these different levels. And what do we do? Yeah. You don't have to go through every single benchmark one through 11 one at a time. Absolutely. Scan through them, see what it is that you are interested in, in improving at your library or what you're interested in learning more about at your library, and just look at that one to start with. Yeah. And if you just use that one little bit of it, that's fine. You mm -hmm. may then decide, okay, you know what, now in six months, let's go back and look at a different part of it. You know, Do it a bit at a time. It's not like I have to do this whole huge thing all at once that's too overwhelming. Absolutely. And like you were saying, you get one of them done. That might put you in a better place, resource or political capital wise or whatever, to work on the next one. And yeah, we're trying to work on all 11 and all subgroups of, of those 11 is just setting yourself up to not get anything done. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with what Krista just said. Just do find some that, and go ahead and grab that low hanging fruit for your first one. That's fine. I, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. anything about it. Uh, so do that. Um, and also, hopefully, we showed that. A lot of these, and you'll see more as you go through the full book uh, benchmarks on your own, that there are parts adaptable to any size of library and any type of library, especially if you treat them as, you know, suggestions and a place to start the discussion. I think that's probably the best way to handle that in especially different types of libraries. Mm -hmm. But I know for the smallest of libraries, you know, and you see something written like this, it's just geared for large urban Go ahead and you know look at these as suggestions and places to grow. And if you start hitting the benchmarks as written, great. Otherwise, you're still trying to improve. You're trying to focus where you're at with technology in all facets in your library. And you might be surprised. I know when we were first working with this at um, with the Gates grant that we were doing. Um, there are some that you may already be meeting and don't even realize. Like a lot, I think mm, a lot yes. of times public libraries are really good at the um, engaging with their their users, the actual yes. patrons, and that's kind of something that's an, it's a no brainer. They do it anyways, and you can find them in here. Uh, probably be engaged in the community or community value that are boom, boom, boom. We're doing this. Awesome. We mm -hmm. look great. And then that's a good way to like sell if you've got some people in your community, on your council, city council, or board, or whatever that are a little. Skeptical of, skeptical of the library's value, you can say, well, according to these benchmarks from this coalition, we are actually doing this, this, and this already, and you know, we rock. So yeah, there you go. Anytime, <laughs> we're not just saying we rock; somebody else is saying we do too. So <laughs> anytime you can end a report to the city council, say we rock, <laughs> whether literally or in more tactful language, is a good thing. So um, at this point, let, any last questions uh, before we run out of time? Yes, if you have any questions, um, anything you want to know about any of the benchmarks, um, any other ones that you want to know more about that Scott didn't mention? You know, he only highlighted a couple of them because, as you said, there's 11 different ones with each of their own sub sections out there. But yeah. um, is there any of them you'd like to um, hear more about? Um, LibraryEdge.org is a website you can pop over to to look through them mm -hmm. and see what's out there. So um, type in your questions to us. And so who's still around? Yeah, we still have people on in. Oh, good. I didn't yeah. chase everyone away. <laughs> um, I thought the math would absolutely do it right there. But, but, but thank I you for sticking say, around. I, I am what I am a li myself. I would say yeah, I'm a librarian who went into libraries not only because, but I was also an English major because I don't I don't do math very well. It's just my it's not my thing, you know. And then you get into library school, and the whole class is all about st um, statistics because you need to do that. <laughs> yep. And I was like, ah, darn, I still have to know math. Fine. <laughs> Well, thank you. For, things. Good job. <laughs> yeah, thank you for those who are sending uh, uh, good jobs. Glad to hear that you're all still awake. I appreciate that. Yes, we can tell who is. 
Well, if you don't have any questions right now, that's okay. Um, there is a lot of resources on the page, and of course, Scott is available. He's investigated this very, I don't know if I'd say deeply, but um, probably more than any of you or any of us have, um, you know, I, I've just been, helped people use it. I've been following it as close as I can without actually being able to participate in it mm -hmm. um, yeah. for, oh, gee, three, four, uh, yeah, since like 2014 mm -hmm. or so, even before that. Yeah. So uh, on the slide, you see my email. If you have further questions, uh, feel free to email me. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we'll include that. Um, you know, we're going to have a link to the website. Uh, these PowerPoint slides will be mm -hmm. up for you as well. And that extra document that has the actual math, so like a cheat sheet. I guess yeah, the, the math for for 9.2 that I talked about plus the 9.1 that we worked through together, mm -hmm. um, that link for the more expanded definitions of these benchmark mm -hmm. parts is on there. Plus, uh, I forgot to mention there is a uh, a link to there for their they have a 20 page edge assessment PDF, and I think let's actually bring up that page right now. Sure, um, you should be able to click on you can see it the Firefox. There, there we go. Yeah. So the edge. Um, Website, if you go to the toolkit, and you'll see all sorts of resources here. Uh, the assessment workbook actually has all of the benchmarks and sub benchmarks, so you can print it out there if you need a paper copy, plus a lot of other things because it is an assessment workbook. Mm -hmm. But instead of always referring to the web page, if you want a print copy, there you go, plus samples of the peer reports, all sorts of good stuff. And, and it's available without being a member or whatever they term a dues paying person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of resources here, yeah. which I was very impressed with. Actually, I remember when Edge first came out and the pilots and it was, they were not sure if, of, of first, of course, was it going to be something you pay for? Was it something right. that always be free? We're still developing it. Um, everyone hoped it would all be free. Um, and I'm really impressed with what they've still left out there for people to use who don't have the the resources to pay for even just the one year um, of it that you can get a lot out of this without having to actually sign up. Yeah, um, yeah like I said, those benchmarks are the heart and soul of this whole thing. That's everything works and, off of, yeah. And, and if you've got those, you've got a good good set of tools mm -hmm. already. And if you find it worth your, your, your budgetary dollars to pay for these other uh, tools, mm -hmm. they have them for you. So. Yeah, and I like that what you said that one library is doing, just doing it for one year to get access to it for just a brief amount of time to at least get a start. That's something yeah. you could put in as like an extra thing for one year of your budget and say, yeah. we want to, you know, we need to, you know, we're building a new library. We're trying to really do a good push on changing things. Yeah. Here's something that can help us do that. We'll just, like you said, you pay for a consultant is a one shot deal. Yeah. Now, Similar I, situation. I don't know if the Edge Coalition would agree with that assessment. No, they probably wouldn't I, like us telling you to do that. <laughs> if, if, they want ongoing. Yeah. yeah. If the Edge Coalition yeah. doesn't like our, our statement, let us know. We will issue a, a disclaimer <laughs> yeah. on that. Uh, but no, I, I, I do think even with that one year, even as a test mm -hmm. to see are we getting money, uh, our money's worth out of these mm -hmm. other tools. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you're doing a big project, because mm -hmm. like we're going to do a big technology push this year. We need all the tools we can get, yeah. both the assessment and the PR and the training stuff. Mm -hmm. It might be a really good thing to write into a grant for a yeah. project budget. Exactly, grants would be something that just could support this for you. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Any last minute urgent questions you want to ask Scott while we've got him trapped here? You type them in. Anything else you want to No, add, thank, thank you for like? listening and mm -hmm. uh, thank you for, for your interest in uh, benchmarks, which is sometimes a very dry type yeah. of topic. So. It can be, and I think they've done a good job at this. And as I said, you know, it was a pilot project. And I've seen it morph over the years too. Yeah. Um. It was pretty. It's it's really gotten turned into a very nice, streamlined, easy to understand and use um service. Yeah. Um. Yeah. From something that was kind of choppy and you know, a little coming off the top of our heads. What can we do? And they used they actually had library. You, know, you saw the groups that the groups that are involved in it, but oh, yeah. they also had um actual libraries that helped inform them of what the yes. questions should really ask and what the benchmarks really should be for like your real life <laughs> what's actually happening in libraries. So um, they were, you know, they listened and adjusted as needed. Okay. All right. 
So I think then we will wrap it up for today. We are just hit exactly 11 a.m., which is almost perfect for us. And we did start a little minutes, a few minutes after 10, so that's perfectly fine. <laughs> so thank you very much, Scott, for bring, coming to her today and telling us all about Edge. Um, as I said, we did have a session about this we were mentioning before we went on live um, a couple of years ago. But um, as we said, they do change things. Yeah, that was June 18th, 2014. Yeah. and Look it up in Google, and you'll find it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And things are very different now, so yeah. <laughs> um, always good to have an update to it and learn more about it. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, it will be recorded and put on our website. If you just type in Encompass Live there for me, we will um, show you where that's at. There we go. Um, this is the main Encompass Live website. And here, I'll get this out of the way for us. There we go. Um, where we have our upcoming shows, but right beneath where our, up, our upcoming shows is, is a link to the archive sessions. And this is where we post all of ours. And I said they do go back all the way to the beginning, 2009. January 2009 was when we started the show. So if you really want to go back and see some historical <laughs> um, stuff, you'll find it in here. But um, this is what we had last week on the show, and it's going to be the same kind of thing. A link to the recording, which will be on our Library Commission YouTube channel. A link to the slides, which will be in our um, SlideShare account. And that document, is it a Word? It's a Word document. Yeah, yeah. that'll be up in the SlideShare as well. Um, links is really just a Library Edge website, so that won't be a separate thing necessarily. <laughs> um, that'll all be there for you. Um, I'll start processing that today. I'll let you guys all know probably later this afternoon that it's available and ready for you to um, look at. Or as I said earlier, share with your friends and colleagues. Um, so that will wrap it up for today. I hope you join us next week when we're talking about books. Um, Friday Reads, the NLC Blogs Books. Um, we started a, there's a couple of different things that go into this session. Uh, we started an intermittent, a, a, as, as we think of it, um, series on Encompass Live of what um, um, Nebraska Library Commission staff talking about books we're reading. We've had some themed ones, romance books, um, men read books, whatever. Um, and we've also started two years ago, I went back and found this out, um, a Friday Reads um, blog post. This is something that um, it started out, I believe, on Twitter. Um, so sure. instead of Friday reads hashtag, and basically it was just on a Friday, um, uh, share what you're reading, what book you have, and just to share what you're, you know, what you might be doing, and people would see what other people were reading. Um, we did, um, and now it's also morphed into blog posts. Every Friday, some people will say, "Here's a book I like. Here's a book I am reading. Here's a book I read years ago, whatever." Um, and we did it here at the commission. So it's a bunch of staff. Every Friday, you'll find a new post by one of us um, talking, just t sharing a book that we um, we like and want to share. Um, we decided to bring some of those together, and we're going to have a group of people. I think there's about four or five of us now who have committed to this. Um, it's still you know, convincing some people. And we're going to actually chat with you about some of the books that we have blogged about on here, so you'll get some good ideas. As you can see from here, I actually went back and looked at all our two years' worth of posts and scanned through them. We do all of these genres that I list here are what people have posted a lot of books about. Nonfiction, memoirs, mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, history, horror, graphic novels, young adult, it, on and on. We are all over the board. We've got 45, 50-ish staff here, and we read all types of things. So you will definitely find something of interest to you <laughs> in next week's show or something you might want to share with some of your um people, your users at your library. So definitely sign up for that one and any of our other upcoming shows. We've got uh, July and August all booked here, so you can see all the different topics we've got coming. Sign up for any of those you'd like to. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, do go ahead and click on our Encompass Live link here. That'll pop you over to our Facebook page, and if you're logged in, which we are not here, you can like our page. And I can't get this to go away something new. Um, we post a reminder to log in today's show. I post um, reminders of upcoming shows and when our recordings are ready. There we go. Not now. Go away. Um, I post when the recordings are ready. So if you are um, on Facebook, definitely give us a like over there to keep up with what we are doing on the show. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we'll see you. Um, so let me double check my questions. No, nope, okay. Just good job. Thanks for the show. All right, we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye bye. <laughs>